You are about to hear another episode of The Deer Slayer, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. Slayer and Judith Hutter have been successful in their search for the lost canoes and have brought them back to the castle, although they encountered dangerous and thrilling experiences in effecting their rescue from the Indians. They are now at the log house in the middle of the lake, where they are discussing methods of obtaining the release of old Tom Hutter and Hurry Harry March, who have fallen into Iroquois hands. Judith tells Deerslayer of an old chest that belongs to her father and they decide to open it and discover, if possible, the means of paying a ransom. The chest is locked, and Hetty alone knows where to find the key. She refuses to help them, saying that it is against her father's wishes, and that some danger lurks within, and they will be sorry if they proceed any further. However, they pay no attention to her, find the key, open the chest, and begin to explore its contents. They find some richly embroidered clothes and a pair of silver-mounted pistols. Deerslayer is handling one of these weapons when the air is torn with a violent explosion and they hear Hetty scream in terror. Hetty, what's wrong? Are you hurt? Oh, Judith, I told you not to open that chest. What was that shot? Where's Deerslayer? Oh, I know something dreadful has happened. We found the pair of old silver pistols, and Deerslayer fired one by accident. But we're both safe. It's all over. It's all over. But it was an error escape. The plowman was old and caked, and the pistol burst into a hundred pieces when I was careless enough to let the hammer fall. But no harm was done. It seems miraculous that a pistol should burst in your hand and you escape without serious accidents. Such wonders aren't uncommon at all among worn-out arms. The first rifle they ever gave me played the same trick. Uh, Thomas Hutter is master of one pistol less than he was yesterday. But as it happened in trying to serve him, there's no ground for complaint, I guess. We've done right in opening the chest, have we? Because we've found enough already to offer a dozen ransoms for Father. And we're not to the bottom yet. Oh, come with us this time. The mischief's done and you've had no part in it. Oh, that's right. Come see the lovely dress we found. I have seen it. Sit down here and watch. We're almost through. What's the next article, dear Slayer? Uh, I don't know what it is, gal. Some unusual instrument, all done up with brass ornaments. It looks like the surveyor's tools I've seen. No, I, I've seen all their implements. But none of them look like this. Was your father ever a surveyor, Judith? No, he's no surveyor, dear Slayer. That instrument goes far beyond his learning. Then he's fallen heir to another man's goods. Ah, what have we here in this bag? This is something new to my eyes. Little pieces of ivory. Heads of men. Knights on horses. And little castles on elephants. Judith, did your parents ever talk to you of religion? My mother did often. My father never. That I can believe. That I can believe. He has no God. No such God as it becomes a white man to worship or even a redskin. Them things are idols. Oh, dear Slayer, do you really think these ivory toys are father's gods? Yes, them are idols. Why should your father keep them if he doesn't worship them? Would he keep his gods in a bag and locked up in a closet? No, no. My father carries his gods with him wherever he goes, and that's in his own cravings. I think these came from some distant country and fell into his hands when he was a sailor. I'm downright glad to hear it, Judith. But I don't think I could keep a white idolater out of his difficulties. What do you call this? Uh, uh, an elephant? Yes, it's an elephant. I've often seen pictures of such animals at the garrison. And Mother had a book in which there was a printed account of the creatures. Well, elephant or no elephant, tis an idol. And not fit to remain in Christian keeping. 
Oh, they may not be idols, dear Slayer. Oh, I know. I remember I've seen one of the officers at the garrison with a set of fox and geese made in this same design. They used them in playing some kind of game. What's this, wrapped in cotton? Maybe it belongs to your idols. Now, let me see. Uh, it's a board with a piece of ivory built into it. I think... Uh... Now I'm sure that these queer figures belong to a game of some sort. Uh, I'm not convinced, Judith. But of one thing I'm certain... One of these uh, elephants, as you call them, would buy a whole tribe of Iroquois. Uh, you need have no fear for your father now. His ransom is settled. Well, when can we visit the tribe and make an exchange? Tonight at sunset, we'll meet my friend, the Delaware chief, at the Big Rock, as we agreed. He'll advise us how we should best make offers to our enemies. Uh, I feel the need of sleep, gal. But half an hour before sunset, we start in the ark to keep the rendezvous with our friend. You keep a lookout on the lake. And call me if you see any sign of our enemies having taken to the water. your friend now. I'm ready, Judith. I've decided, Gal, to go alone in one of the canoes. It'll be a hazardous journey, and you shouldn't risk your life in the venture. I've been thinking too, my friend, and I think you should take the ark, because it's quite safe from the enemy's rifles. And in that case, I'll go along, because I know how to use firearms, and I can be of service if you're attacked. You can do the rowing, and I'll stand guard when your friend Chingakook makes his jump from the rock to the boat. What about Hetty? Oh, I discussed the matter with her, and she insists on staying here at the castle. She's been very sullen all day because we insisted on opening that chest. She seems to be making some plan of her own, but I can't tell what it is. But the varmints will see us when we leave here. And if they've been building a raft, they'll make an attempt to occupy this castle in our absence. Hetty will not be able to keep them out. Oh, she can lock herself up here. Anyway, as I've explained to you, the Indians believe that Hetty is feeble-minded, as she is, poor child. They'll not harm her. In fact, she'll be safer here than with us on the ark. Well, it's time to leave, dear Slayer. Are you ready? I'm not convinced you're right, Judith. Though the cabin on the ark is built of good stout logs. And if we can rescue the chief, the two of us can stand off the enemy a long time, unless they swamp us before we get off the shore. Uh, I guess we'll try it. You bring the canoes inside the palisades and padlock them in, and I'll fasten these doors and windows. Judith, if your father was ever on the sea, it's likely that he has a spyglass around here. Uh, have you ever seen one? Oh, yes. We use it all the time. It's on those high brackets in the corner of his room. I'll get it. Dear Slayer. Hello, Hetty. Are you over your fright now? Dear Slayer. Do you think if I went ashore and told the Indians it was unchristian to hold father, they'd let him go? No, Hetty. The Redskins can understand such doctrines. You stay here with the castle until we bring off my friend. And tomorrow we'll try to bring them to their senses with the ransom things we found in the chest. Do you see this little book, dear Slayer? It's a Bible. It belonged to Mother. She taught me to read it. I'll take this to the Indians and tell them that there's a God who rules over the whole earth and is a ruler of all men, red or white. Oh, I understand a little now what they mean who have told me about your reasoning powers, Gal. I've seen too much of these natives in my life to know the reception of that kind of preaching. I've often gone among the Indians, dear Slayer, and have preached to them, too. They never harmed me. They were not on the warpath then, or it would have been different. I know they'll not harm you yourself, but they won't listen to anything you can say about releasing their captives. No, you leave that to me and Chingakook. Here's the spyglass, dear Slayer. Well, does Hattie still insist on staying here? I'll stay here. I've much to think about, and I can't help you on the water. Judith and I will cast off then in the ark, Hattie. You better keep a lookout through these little windows that look so much like portholes. If all holds well, we should be back an hour after dark. Keep 
keep your glass on the shore, gal. They're probably preparing a raft. Can you see anything? No, dear Slayer. I've studied the shore inch by inch, and I see nothing yet. Well, why are you heading the scow in all manner of directions? I'm trying to baffle the bombers. They're no doubt watching us, but I'll make them leg weary tramping after us. And at the last minute, I'll swing back to the rock. Well, must we reach the rock exactly at the moment the sun sets? Precisely. Well, a few moments sooner or later won't matter, though, will it? Yes, it will. The rock's within pine flank distance for a gun. It won't do to hover too close or too long. Do you see any sign of the enemy yet? No, everything is quiet. I can't see a motion. But it's getting gloomy along the banks now, and we're not far from the rock. Why are you heading east again? The rock is almost due south. As I told you, to get the savages tramping off in the wrong direction. You really think they're watching our movement? Certainly. Oh, I was in hopes they'd fallen back into the woods and left us to ourselves for a few hours. That's altogether a woman's conceit. There's no let up in an engine's watchfulness when he's on the warpath. His eyes are on us this minute. Our only hope is to get them off on a wrong scent. The Mingos have good noses, but a white man's reason ought to equalize their instinct. Now we'll head in. Keep your eyes alert. Oh, I like the way you make decisions, dear Slayer. You make me confident that we'll succeed. Was your father ever in the hands of the Iroquois before? Yes, once, but a few skins easily released him. Well, it won't be so easy this time. I'll take the sail down now, and we'll float in close. Stand at the loophole there on the, on the side next to the shore. And give me warning if anyone approaches. We must be close in now, Judith. Can you see the rock? Yes. Is it empty? Can you see the Delaware chief yet? No, dear Slater. Neither rock, shaw, nor trees seem to have ever held a human being. Keep close, Judith. Keep close. A rifle has a prying eye, a nimble foot, and a desperate fatal tongue. Keep close, but be on the alert. And you, dear Slater, do you keep close? Don't let the savages get a glimpse of you. A bullet will be as fatal to you as to me. No fear of me, gal. No fear of me. Don't look this way. Keep your eyes on the rock. <laughs> what is it? What is it, Judith? There's a man on the rock. An Indian warrior in his paint and armed. Where does he wear his hawk's feather? Is it fast to the warlock? Or does he carry it above the left ear? Above the left ear. He smiles, too, and mutters the word, Mohican. God be praised, is a serpent at last. He's getting ready to jump in the ark, dear Slayer. Here he comes. Huh? Serpent, come. Dear Slayer, on time. Welcome, serpent. You're here in the nick of time. Pull, dear Slayer. Pull to life and death. The lake is full of savages waiting after us. Help me get this craft underway, Chief. Once in motion, we can fight off an army. Fall, dear Slayer. The hell's day. They're swimming to the ark. They're coming after us. They'll seize the ark. 